go through, uh, through a kind of triangle, if you wish. So, um, uh, so the, the first, so the first quantity is the, is the, um, the phase transition in, uh, in the simply in, the, in the, the topology of the space of em sympathetic embeddings of balls of some capacity C in a manifold. So we know that we have proof uh, a few years ago that this undergoes uh, uh, at just at, for at least at least for ruled four dimensional rural sympathetic fam manifolds, this undergoes, uh, undergoes a critical value, just one critical value. Below that qu critical value, the space of ball retracts to the center, if you wish, just to points. So it retracts to the manifold itself. And uh, so it's, of course, finite dimensional. And uh, so the homology is, uh, is, is finite. I mean, there is, and then above that value, then it breaks, breaks up, it breaks completely, it becomes completely crazy. And there, there, are, there, are, there are homology groups, uh, non-vanishing homology groups in dimensions as high as you wish. Okay, so that's, that's a problem. And this problem actually is based on, um, on uh, let's say, just homology or homotopy groups, of course, of embedding, uh, of uh, sympathetically embedded balls. And this, uh, th for this, you need to have continuous families of balls, you know. So, so you have, so if you have, you have, for example, you have S, for the homotopy, so you have Sn, so Sn and inside uh, the embedding of balls. It's a bizarre, it's a bizarre blackboard, isn't it? Uh, uh, balls of uh, B4 of capacity C in, in M, which where M is, uh, is uh, symplectic, symplectic with this form, symplectic form. And then you have, so you have, so if M is here, say, so if M is okay. if M is here, then you have a family like this. So you have a continuous, you have a family of balls parameterized by uh, uh, high dimension, some high dimensional manifold. And this is this for some homotopy reason. Uh, in in some cases, I mean, in many cases, this actually is is always on two on M. If you just look at the center of the balls. Okay, if you look at the center of the balls, this will be on two for homotopy reason. So it means that this, this of course, if the points cover M, then the balls also cover M. So, but here you see that this is a covering which is continuous. And uh, so that, that's one point. And the other point is the uh, Polterovich notion of... So here I should say that there is a critical value here, so for this space here, there is a critical value C crit. So that that, that just explains. So below that, below that, everything is tame, and, and above that, it be, things com becomes completely crazy. Although we have computed uh, all the homotopy and homology groups of the space, and so and on the on the other hand, you have this uh, theorem by Polterovich, which which look at uh, at finite coverings. So you just so in the classical case, classical meaning that it's just finite coverings. It's not a continuous covering. So you have a, some covering like this, and uh, and then for each covering you look at a partition of unity, okay, uh, with values in the in the real, and like this in the real, and then you look at the partition of unity, and then you look at so you look you, you look at the Poisson bracket, so uh, so the Poisson bracket of the, the summation of i i, so let's let's call these functions. So you have just a, a finite number. So let's call it n, and uh, you just look at the summations of i a i that belongs to R, of f i, where these these are the f i, these functions, and then you just take the Poisson bracket of this with b i, b i f i, and you take the sup norm. Sup norm of this. And of course, the con you need a, you need a, you need a normalization condition, and the normalization condition is that each a i and b i so let's call it a and b belongs to minus one one to the power n. Okay, so all of these coefficients are between minus one and plus one. It's just it's just of course to normalize things because then there's nothing to say. And then and then the, so you look at this and then you. For each, so then you have a, you have a, a soup, soup, inf. 
So the soup is here, the first soup is here. Then you take the soup over all A and B like in this, and then you take the inf of all partition of unity subordinated to, the, to your finite covering. Okay, so, so that's a triple, <laughs> so, so you have soup, soup, inf. And this, this is the, what, uh, what Paul Tirovich called the point carré bracket of, of the covering U. And what he proved using, uh, using uh, heavy stuff, that is uh, uh, spectral invariance, uh, quasi-states, quasi-morphisms, and so on, he proved that this is always larger than 1 over 2 n squared, where n is just the cardinality of the, of the covering. And, uh, and the conjecture, of course, the problem is that when your covering becomes uh, the number here, n, when n, of course, becomes larger, then, the, then this goes to 0. And therefore, there is, a, there is no intrinsic uh, number associated to the uh, Poisson non-commutativity of that manifold. And the conjecture by Paul Terovich is a very hard one. I mean, and to, my, uh, to my opinion, it's the one of the, the hardest conjectures in synthetic topology. But actually, there is a lower bound, lower bound that does not depend on n, or capital N. So if this is true, then to each synthetic manifold, you can a assign a number that measures the Poisson non-commutativity non of the manifold. Okay so, uh, okay, so in order to relate both, of course, to relate both, because here, so, so this, this num so now, it, in the case of Polyarovich, uh, these open sets are any, I mean, you have a finite number of open sets and, and uh, open sets, and there are any open sets, okay, so you, but uh, if you restrict these open sets to be simply embedded bars of capacity C, then somehow, I will explain why, somehow you can define the PB, the, so this PB of C, okay? So it's not obvious because it depends on the homology class that you use to parameterize these synthetic bars. But it turns out that we have proved that it actually does not. And I will explain that later. So, and then, then the, the, the main problem is to, to, uh, to see what is the, the what, what are the phase, trans I mean, the critical values of this PB of C and to understand if they are related or not to the critical values that are here. Yeah. So that's more or less the, the goal. One ball? Why, why do you say one ball? Yeah, no, no, yes, but it's, no, no. You have a map from SN to that. So you have a SN family, okay? Okay, you have, you have a lot, not one ball. You have a lot, lots of, okay? And it's, and it's continuous. So it's not a finite number of, uh, of balls. Okay, so let's just try to see if do this work. So down is here, no? Uh, yeah, yes. No, that's not this. No, that's the other one. Okay. So, morally, what we are trying to do is to relate uh, a kind of new, I mean, eventually, a new theory of statistical template topology, which is on the left, and uh, a quantum, a quantum uh, non-commutativity uh, uh, theorem on the right. So of course, to, com to, to compare both, we have to go in the continuous setting of, 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 of the open sets, of course. So, so the, the theorem, uh, the theorem by, by Polyarovich must be generalized to the, to, to the case where the finite covering is a continuous covering. Okay, perfect. So, okay, so here is actually the, the setting. So T will be a compact manifold, C infinity, okay, with a measure of total mass. One, and then M will be any manifold, so any closed smooth manifold. So this is actually so. So in the beginning here, I'm just 
I'm just doing just ordinary differential geometry. Okay. I, I actually, it's very surprising that this has ne never done, been done before, but let's do it. Okay. So you have, so we just want to give uh, an idea of what is a partition of unity mm -hmm. uh, in the in the in the continuous case of, uh, of of open sets. So these open sets there that are that are which are a continuous family could, of course, these open sets could uh, could have surgery. They could the, the topology of the, the open set could move. Okay, but this makes the theory a bit uh, a bit uh, cumbersome and a bit uh, difficult. So to simplify, I will just take the case. Like it's not a big problem, but just to simplify the, the, this uh, talk, I would just case, take the case where we have a, a fixed diffeomorph diffeomorphic type of of this these beams. So, uh, so here, so we have uh, this, and then, uh, then definition. Then, uh, so let U be a bounded open set of R n uh, such that. So, what I actually, I so this is a this is a, an open set, but actually, I wish to work with closed uh, closed uh, open. With the closure of U, so uh, such that uh, one, because I, I'll need that uh, in, in some essential way. So, for example, a, a U of this kind. So a U of this kind here that would be uh, like this, uh, like this, uh, what was I doing? Just like this, this, and with with this remove, or this should say, oops, with with. With this remove would not be acceptable because I wish that the boundary of uh, of U uh, be such that it can be extended to some open set, okay, uh, uh, which is uh, embedded. So one uh, uh, U bar can be extended. To uh, uh, to uh, an embedded. Set with uh, set, I said, <coughs> with of course u bar being smooth in this case, and two. Uh, so uh, <coughs> no, there is no two. That's enough. And then the uh, a constant. So now we have this in this uh, the same this, this, uh, same definition. A continuous cover continuous cover Actually, uh, of M of type TU. So T is the parameter is, uh, is the parameter space is simply is simply a map, a continuous map. Map uh, uh, G of t times u to m that uh, such that such that uh, so now there are two conditions uh, for of course for every t g t is an embedding okay smooth infinity okay that can be extended Extended to some neighborhood of uh, of of U, okay, that, so that it will th th therefore it will it will contains U bar, and two and two uh, the image of source. of uh, all the U's by G T by G cover or G T sorry cover. Over M. 
OK, so this is what I call the continuous cover, uh, indexed by this, the, uh, the parameter, parameter space. Um, uh, <coughs> P. Okay, perfect. So, uh, Okay, uh, now, what is the, def the next definition is the, the partition of unity. So a partition of, of unity of G is simply uh, uh, yeah, of G or subordinated to G, let's say, subordinated to G. So G is a, uh, is a measurable, me measurable uh, function, measurable function uh, F tilde. So this I would call uh, F. And uh, so F is F tilde, you'll see immediately why. Uh, so F tilde from U to R. P time u, sorry, P time u, P time u to r. So this is actually the picture that I that I did before. Okay, so for each t, you have a function from u to r, and then you just have to push it uh, forward by g. So then, then this, this will give you a function with compact support on the uh, open the corresponding open set indexed by t uh, on the manifold M. So uh, so such that such that uh, each each uh, f t tilde uh, from u to r is a true function function uh, with compact support in u. Okay, and such that and such that uh, uh, for all x in m. The integral of x f t of x dt over t is equal to one. Okay, so this is the natural generalization of a, a partition of a partition of unity in, in the continuous case. Okay, is this okay? Yeah. Igor, you have, yeah, you have a question. Yeah. Oh, yes. Where? Oh, yes. Yes. Where? I've not finished. <laughs> where, where F? I, I told it. I, I said it, but uh, I did not write it. Or F is the push forward. Of F tilde. So F T is the push forward of true by G T. So you have at the source, because it, so this f tilde is at the source, okay? But you just push it to, uh, to the manifold. Very well, okay. Okay, perfect. So. Okay, perfect. So the theorem is that, so I, I mean, this is just ordinary differential geometry. So the theorem, the theorem is that each, each continuous cover, I mean, the proof is not so obvious actually, but each continuous cover admits a partition of unity. Okay, so I'm not sure that I will have time to, I could come back at the end of, if I have time, to prove that 
theorem, but it's uh, it's basically uh, it's it's not so obvious as I said. Uh, you won't have to work a bit here. Uh, and this is actually this is the point where you use the fact that u bar as u has a smooth boundary that can be extended to a core neighborhood of itself. In any case, so. Uh, <coughs> Okay, perfect. Uh, okay, uh, uh, okay, perfect. So now, uh, now the, we we restrict to to uh, to uh, U and GT such that GT from U to M. Omega. I hope it's exactly where I need it. Yeah. Uh, maybe not. Not maybe not now. Just a moment. Um, no, that's not. That's a bit too soon. I'll do that just in a minute. Okay. Perfect. So Polterovich, you use uh, Polterovich and collaborators. Uh, introduce the introduce the ID of Poisson the 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 the, the ID of Poisson non com non Poisson non commutativity of a of a finite covering uh, cover cover of m omega, and it does it in the following way. So, uh, so m omega is symmetry manifold closed. And then, uh, uh, and then U is a finite covering. Yeah, let's say U1 up to Un. And so define the, define the, the PB, the Poisson bracket. PB is for Poisson bracket. The Poisson bracket of U, of U. As okay, as PB of U is equal by definition to uh, so to the infimum uh, over all F1 up to Fn, so that is any partition of unity, uh, which is equal to let's call it F, uh, subordinated to G, to sorry to U. To you of the sup of uh, AI, uh, so uh, AI BI of the norm of the Poisson bracket of summation B go to one to N of uh, AI FI, and then you have the summation from J go to one to N. Of B I F I, and this is a norm sup. <coughs> so you see that already here you have uh, one sup, uh, two sup, and one imp. This is this is why actually, uh, and then I uh, will uh, we'll introduce another imp uh, a bit later. And actually, this is why it's so difficult to work with that. Okay, it's uh, it's really a mess. Uh, it's really hard to just to work with this kind of definition. Okay, perfect. So, uh, <coughs> so just here, actually, so the, the main theorem, 
by Pilterovich. And R is the following is that the uh, there is a there is this uh, so T B of U is strictly larger than or maybe larger equal to one over two n square, where n is just the number of open sets that you get. So this proof is used uh, so it's it's a hard proof. Uh, sorry, it's a hard proof. It's used uh, uh, spectral invariance, spectral invariance, and quasi states. So you can find a proof of this in the uh, the CRM CRM monograph. So the, when I was directing the CRM, I asked uh, ask Leonid to, draw, to write uh, something on this. And uh, it's by uh, Paul Terovich and, uh, and Dan Daniel Rosen. <coughs> OK, perfect. So now the main conjecture of Paul Terovich is that, and it's conjecture, is that actually there is a there is a bound that does not depend on capital N. There is a bound, a strictly positive bound. That does not uh, depend on N. And uh, and therefore, this implies that each each sympathetic manifold as a, as a Poisson bracket invariant. So, of course, this measure the uh, it's of course determined by the, the, by the topology, but also by the sympathetic form. It, it, it says essentially that uh, so what what the PB invariant here, of course, measure the the uh, the non the Poisson non commutativity of uh, of uh, a partition of unity. Okay. No, even for surfaces, it's extremely hard. Yeah, there is no case that has been computed. No case. Sorry. P PB of U is just a number. Just a number. Yes. So yes, so this is a num soup. So this this is a number. Uh, yes, I suppose. Yes, I suppose it's scale with omega. Yes. Because because you take the Poisson bracket here. So so the Poisson bracket by definition is is the sympathetic uh, the, the differential of first applied to the sympathetic gradient of the second. I suppose that you. So the first, of course, the the differential of first does not depend on omega, but the yeah, no, it's, it's just it. So it, so it, it scales linearly. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So uh, <coughs> so so that, that that's wonderful because then it means that the sympathetic manifold actually so, uh, sees the. So if you, if you quant if you quantify the sympathetic manifold somehow, it's it means that you have a measure. You have a classical here measure, classical in the sense that you work in classical sympathetic topology, and you have a measure of non non commutativity of that. That that should have impact on the non computability of operators in quantum uh, in the quantum mechanics. So uh, so that's a, I mean that's a great conjecture. So to me it's one of the most difficult conjectures uh, at the moment. Yeah, sure. Is it proved in? No, not at all. No. Actually, what the only thing the only improvement is due to uh, to Buchowski. Now, even on the sphere of the torus, it's, uh, I mean, it's, it has not been proved, so it's, it's really hard. Okay. So Buchowski have, have in, has increased that to 1 over something, a constant, let's say, I don't remember which one, log of n. Okay. Oh, for, sorry, for surfaces. <laughs> for surfaces. Oh yeah, exactly. I'm coming for that, to that. 
that's a very good question. I'm going to that. Okay, so great. Sure. Okay, perfect. So, uh, where is the uh, okay? Uh, <clears throat> okay, now we have to extend that to continuous cover covers. Okay, so uh, okay, so definition. Uh, so the PB, PB in the continuous case. So that's really the the usual thing. So uh, so you still have m omega, and then you uh, you have uh, T, and then you take uh, TU. So this is of type TU, and so T is a parameter, is a parameter of space. TU is a fixed open subset of of uh, R2n of R2n here. So that's 2n now of R2n, and uh, and uh, so G is a continuous cover. Continuous cover. Okay, and uh, uh, of type TU. And then for each partition of unity, so of course, yes, I, I've not said that, but in the continuous case, a partition of unity, of course, is, is, defined, is defined by replacing sum by integrals. Huh? So, so for each partition of unity, uh, F, let's say, of G, uh, take Take the uh, the norm of uh, uh, the Poisson bracket of the of the integral over t of a t uh, f t t t with b t f t b t. So where here a and b belong to uh, to uh, maps. Maps from um, um, uh, what uh, let me uh, t t uh, zero one t minus one. Okay, perfect. So you do this, and uh, and the uh, so that's the definition, and then you take the uh, so you take this, and then finally you take uh, uh, so you take the inf. Sorry, the sup. No, the inf or the soup. Uh, the soup of that over all a b, and then you take the uh, the inf. Subordinated to G. Yeah, sure. Oh, yes, I missed one. Yes, I missed one. Thank you. Okay, perfect. So uh, <coughs> now, uh, <coughs> so of course, of course, we we, uh, we of course recover the defi recover quality of our definition when t is of dimension dimension of t zero, just a finite set of one. <coughs> Okay, perfect. So uh, um, now the the last definition on this is that 
Now, now that we have something continuous, then we can take the homotopy class of these uh, of, uh, of these Gs, and uh, this this gives, this gives exactly the following. So we define the the PB of the homotopy class. Of uh, <coughs> you know, the class A, let's say A belongs to C times U M as the M M of of P B of G over that homotopy class. So uh <coughs> When uh, when G uh, runs over all over all uh, cover in the class A. <coughs> okay, perfect. So that's the so now we have uh, one soup, one soup, one inf, and a second inf, which is uh, this. This is the fourth inf. And uh, now it becomes really interesting if you, um, so I think I'm now here. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so the, uh, so it would be interesting when the, uh, the, uh, the type, the, the U will become a, a, a simple integral of capacity C. And, but just before going to that, uh, I have to, so this is the main input by, by uh, Lev Buhovsky, so reducing the dimension to one. So what uh, what Lev Buhovsky uh, had the idea of Lev Buhovsky was that actually, if uh, uh, what is it? Uh, if uh, yes, if t so t is of some dim some dimension m, let's say. So if we can. Always, so in this computation, you can always replace t of dimension uh, m by some just interval, 0, 1, of dimension 1. And, uh, and uh, the idea is quite subtle, but I, so of course uh, there is, I have no time to explain that, although it's uh, written in, in full details in, the, in our paper on, in, on archive. But uh, <coughs> the idea is, is the following. So, um, so what is exactly the theorem? So, so you still have the same thing. And so the PB, so that this is a theorem, uh, the PB uh, of any homotopy class uh, of some, let's say, of some homotopy class, of, of some any homotopy class. Okay, uh, of maps uh, uh, is equal to the PB of some class. And the class here, it will be uh, zero one. Uh, times u to m, and uh, that, that this will be, uh, uh, this is going to be um, g. And uh, <coughs> as soon as if, if the each subset, so you have, you take the image by gt of each u, and then you, you, you have that this u be, uh, be uh, displaceable by some Hamiltonian isotopy in M. And you have, of course, that this covers M. So that's the only two, two conditions. If uh, G covers M, and, and uh, JT of, uh, as I said, uh, covers M and um, Ah, yes, and 
uh, each gt of u is displaceable. Perfect. So that's the theorem. And so the, the proof is, is quite long. I mean, it's, it takes, uh, the proof takes a few pages. But the ID, which is not actually uh, the, the driving ID, which is not actually the one that we really use in the proof, but the driving ID is that, because when, when uh, Bihovsky came with this ID, uh, just the day after, my, my doctoral student, uh, Jordan Payet, who is uh, the co-author of this paper, is, uh, went, uh, came to another, with another proof. And this other proof is not exactly rigorous, uh, although I think we can make it rigorous and uh, by some smoothing. But it came with the idea, of the, which is the following. Each compact space T can be filled by a Hilbert curve that preserves the measure. Wait, yes? Oh, I, I, I can't see it. <laughs> uh, yeah. The, yeah, the PB of some homotopy uh, class of uh, uh, defined on, on uh, T can always, is equal to some of the class defined on the interval zero one. You can replace always t by zero mod. So it is a reduction to dimension one. And the idea is, is so, so the idea is, so the intuitive idea, the intuition is that that, that does not really work, but which is really uh, the driving idea is the following, is that the intuition is that uh, if t is given, then you can find a map from zero one to t. Okay, such that, such that, and that's the point. Okay, of course, you have the piano curve, you have lots of things. But here the point is that with this curve, it is, uh, which is measure preserving. Okay, this comes with a measure. Okay, that I already always write, uh, that I always wrote dt up to now. And uh, which is, which is uh, measure preserving. Okay, so uh, so that's the intuition. Okay, so you can pull back. So when you have this, then you can pull back everything on zero on the interval zero one. Okay, perfect. Uh, right. Yeah. The area of on yeah. Okay, so you have okay, so you have m here. Or t sub t here, and then you have a curve. And this is like this, thing, blah, 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 blah. Okay. And then you take any uh, open set here, let's say. And the, uh, the area of that, okay, is the same as the, so the, the volume of that is the same as the volume of the pre-image. Yeah, it, it fills, it fills a manifold. Uh, it completely fills a manifold. So this is on two. Yeah, this is on two. Of course, not uh, by bijection, but it is on two. <coughs> okay, perfect. So, <coughs> okay, now the last uh, part is is reducing to so adding. So we'll now restrict to a particular case, which is a case that is of, of interest to me. And this case would be when t when u is the is a standard ball of capacity C and G. And G for each G T for each T is a simplistic morphism, uh, simplistic, so a simplistic embedding. So now restriction. Two simplistic, two simplistic balls. Okay, perfect. So so now U becomes the standard round ball. R to N of capacity C. And, uh, and GT is a simplistic embedding. For each T 
Okay, now I have to recall that uh, G, so, so U is the standard bar. And remember that U bar, can, U bar can be extended to some neighborhood, okay? So actually, we are dealing with closed bar. Okay? Or the, that's, that's the idea of all the definitions of these U's is that actually we want to deal not with U, but U, U bar, okay, a closed, a closed set. It's much better, it's much better for uh, lots of things. <coughs> okay, so, uh, <coughs> okay, so by the, the, by the reduction theorem, by, sorry, by the uh, one, the reduction to one dimension, We just have we have to have to consider the the maps uh, uh, G from uh, the bar. Uh, sorry, uh, the uh, the bar. Um, uh, yeah, sorry, G from zero one. Cross the ball to n. Okay, that's the so now that this is the point. Okay, and then of course for each such map we will have a some partition of unity. Okay, great. So, <clears throat> so then we have uh, the following definition. So I think I will have finished in, yeah, in on time. So definition is the following. So we define we define GB of uh, C for uh, M, M given. Given. So we define GB of C uh, beta as GB of 0, 1 uh, DCN uh, C beta, where beta is just the connected component of these bonds. Synthetic connected component. So now here's the main theorem. Actually, it's really topology. <coughs> there is no hard stuff in this uh, theorem. So the main theorem uh, as a function. So yes, this I will denote, for example, in any rules. So as soon as you know that, that the simplicity bonds are connected, then, then I will just forget beta. Okay. So I will just forget beta if, if it is connected. The space of symbolic bars is connected because then beta is always the same, it's just a point. And uh, so as a function of uh, zero C max, C max is of course the biggest bar that you can, the capacity of the biggest bar that, that you can simplically embed in M. So you have this to, uh, to zero infinity. And uh, PB, PB satisfies B satisfies one that is non increasing, so it is decreasing if you wish. But not not not, uh, not not necessarily strictly. So it is non increasing. In English we say non increasing. Uh, in French we say decreasing, whatever. So two uh, it is upper than something else. So that's the main theorem. And uh, <coughs> so, uh, so PB of C is called, 
I mean, I call it Jewish. I call it uh, the the uh, non commutativity. at level, at scale, at scale C. OK, so here, the proof of that is, I said, as I said, is uh, there is no, no hard stuff, but there is a hard topology. I mean, it's just a bit hard topology because we have two, two sup and two inf. But it's, uh, it's based on the fact that if you have a symplectic embedding, I mean, basically, if you have a symplectic embedding of the ball, C to N uh, C inside M, which is symplectic, then, uh, then by all the definitions that we have, we know that this can be extended to some open neighborhood of that. So, uh, so, so we have an extension functor, and we have a, re a restriction functor. So, uh, so we have the restriction is obvious. So you have a ball like this, you can just restrict it to a smaller ball. Okay. So, so using the, the, the two functor, the two functor, that ex which has an extension and restriction, and using the capacity of the closed ball and, and so on and so on, then you can, def you can transport your partitions of unity to, I mean, it's a bit complicated because, you know, you, it's, I mean, it's not an obvious definition. Uh, so, so it's a bit complicated, but it's not, I mean, it's not, uh, there's nothing uh, uh, that needs profound ideas and uh, profound techniques, I would say, to pr the proof of that. Okay, perfect. So, uh, so now just a word about phase transition and the conjecture. So I will just uh, end this with the, the, the a precise statement about the, the phase transition. So now I've described one side of my uh, kind of mirror symmetry, if you wish, of my, because, I mean, because it's, uh, it's mirror symmetry is probably not, yes, of course, not the right word, but it's kind of a pairing or of two very different concepts. That is non commutativity and phase uh, transition. But um, so now uh, just a word about phase transition. Okay, so, uh, so the theorem is the following, which is due to uh, Anjush, to myself, and uh, Pinsono. Actually, we worked that with Pinsono first, who is my PhD student, who was my PhD student. And then uh, Andrush, uh, Andrush joined us a bit later. So, uh, so in any in any uh, rules, symplectic manifold of dimension four or four manifold and omega, and there is a unique C critical critical such that such that uh, the uh, the infinite dimensional space of uh, space of all embedding of B to N C inside M, which are symplectic, uh, undergoes uh, the following processing. So there exists a C critical <coughs> ah, such that sorry. Uh, the following property um, um, below below that value below that value C critical, then uh, the space M retracts to a finite dimensional manifold. And uh, above, ah uh, yes. Yeah, so there is a unique, sorry, huh? a unique critical value. So and above, uh, it is it it is of uh, it does not retract to any compact unity complex. And in the simplest case, if you have S2 times S2, 
So S2 here, or let's say, no, 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 let's, let's uh, normalize, let's, let's, let's say A, and then S2 of B would be larger than A, let's say, larger than A, okay? So the, the critical value here, C critical, will be, the, will be uh, B minus A. So it is not obvious at all. I mean, this result is not obvious at all. <laughs> it took us a few years to get that there. <coughs> Okay, perfect. So, so we have this. Uh, so now this is the. Now we have the two sides of the uh, of the correspondence that I would like to explain. And uh, uh, so now the conjecture. So now I just finish with two conjectures. Conjecture one, which is not probably true. I'm not sure. Either. I should probably say a, a question. Maybe a question one. Question one. Uh, so this is the, I call it the phase, the phase, uh, the PB phase transition conjecture. So it's uh, the fact that the, uh, the function PB of C, okay, uh, is locally constant. A constant upper semi continuous, so we know. So this we know. So so we, this we know. Uh, <coughs> of C, which jumps. The, so so it, since it is upper semi continuous, continuous, the only jumps can be, can uh, cr can be downward. So it jumps downward, downward, uh, only at the phase transition. Critical value. Okay, so that's the first conjecture, or the first question. So this is. So you see, there is something a bit bizarre in that conjecture because, because in this case here, this critical value is such that when you cross this critical value, the P0, the P1, and the pi, the pi 0, the pi 1, and the pi 2 stay the same. So this actually is the first phase transition discover in physics or in mathematics or so, uh, whatever, which happens only at the P pi truth level. And then, of course, at other levels as well. Okay, so physicists could never have discovered that okay, because they are just interested in pi zero, so yeah, con connected components. Okay. So, uh, uh, but the problem is that when, when the jump happens, there are some of the homotopy groups that change and others that do not change. And this depends on very subtle questions. So, for example, if, the, if, uh, if you, you, know, you look at embeddings of symplectic balls, but if you, if you forget symplectic, Okay, then there is a there is a, there is a function, you know, a map uh, from the homotopy group to homology group from the, which is not symplectic to uh, sorry, what is symplectic to which with something which is not symplectic, and you look at if the if the if this uh, transition uh, affect both sides. You know. So in any case, it turns out that in this case here, the uh, the uh, the phase transitions affect some homotopy groups but not all. On the other hand, we know that for the PB invariant, it affects everything because it, everything can be re reduced to dimension to dimension one. Okay, so it's, so this conjecture is not is not so uh, I mean is not so appealing. I would say so. It's, it, you know, it, I mean there's there's nothing that what I said does not show that this this question is false. It just shows that it might be false. Okay. But however, the second conjecture is probably true. So this I will state not as a question but really as a conjecture. And this, I will end the talk with that. <coughs> it's the topology conjecture. So we have, uh, so we know that uh, if you have here PB of C, we know that we have a function here which uh, eventually jumps. Okay, so, uh, yeah, where is, where is the, uh, it's uh, upper semi-continuous, so, so it's, is it here or there? <laughs> okay, in any case, figure this out <laughs> for yourself. Okay, so. 
So like this. So it's 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 uh, it's decreasing, not necessarily strictly, and you have jumps. Okay, and this these jumps. Uh, so you might have jumps, and uh, so uh, so the 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 interesting question is, I mean, is what happens when we have when you go when c goes to zero. So when c goes to zero, it means that you are covering your manifold with very very small balls. And then if you have the partition of unity subordinated to, to that, to these very, very small balls, then they will interact a lot, okay? So this, this is why it is morally, this is why this is non-increasing, non okay? Because bigger the balls are, you just have a, I mean, you just, you have less, more or less, less uh, uh, functions uh, in your partition of unity, and so it's easier to make them, to choose them in such a way that they do not interact too much so they don't produce so much non-commutativity. And so, but the question is, what happens when c is equal to zero? So the, the conjecture is that. So, of course, if this is true, then that is true, in, at least for a four-dimensional rule manifold. Conjecture is that uh, when c goes to zero, or is small enough, so it has uh, uh, pb, or if you wish, the limit. That point here, the limit uh, uh, of c b as c goes to zero. So is a topology, topological invariant. That, it, that is, it does not depend on the sampling form. So this is true here that in, in, in because all these uh, these uh, critical values are uh, are uh, are uh, are such that they appear once and before that they're the this locally constant and after that it's locally I mean, the, the homotopy type of these balls is is uh, locally constant also so uh, so uh, of course if this is true and if uh, so if this conjecture is true then that one is true also at least for the case that we know, the cases that we know. But I think that probably this is a good conjecture for, uh, for all manifolds. Okay, thank you very much for listening.